Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to make a frequency table, specifically a grouped frequency table or grouped frequency distribution table. Now remember, frequency tables are a way for us to organize and display data. Frequency tables show us the number of times something occurs in a data set. Let's jump into our example and see how to make a frequency table to represent our data. So we have the ages of the teachers at a high school. Now the first thing that we need to do is find the range of the data. The range tells us how far our data spans, so how spread out the data is between the highest value and lowest value. Knowing the range will help us determine how we are going to approach making our table. It starts us off. All we need to do here is find our highest number in value and lowest number in value, then find the difference between them. The highest number in value is 65, and then the lowest number in value is 23. So the oldest teacher is 65, and the youngest teacher is 23. Let's find the difference, so we need to subtract. So let's do 65 minus 23. 65 minus 23 gives us a range of 42. Seeing that our range is 42, we're not going to want to write each individual number within our table. We don't want to start at 23 and then count up to 65. That table would be extremely long, and then also the frequency for each value, each age, would be only one or zero. We may have a two here or there. That would not be the best way to set this table up. So we're going to make a grouped frequency table. We will have groups called classes or class intervals that the ages will fall within. So the next thing we need to do is determine the number of classes, the number of groups we want. For this example, let's use five classes. This is going to be a good number for this data and set our table up nicely. As far as determining how many classes for a frequency table, typically speaking, there's going to be somewhere between five and 15 classes or five and 20 classes. And this depends on the data, the range of the data, and how you want to set your table up. Again, for this example, we're going to use five. Next, we need to determine our class width, which simply put is the size of each of our classes, our groups. So basically, it's how many numbers will be in each class. We can determine our class width by taking the range and dividing it by the number of classes we want. So we can use this for our class width, or it will at least give us a starting point and something to go off of. Our range is 42, and then we want five classes. So let's do 42 divided by five. That gives us eight and four tenths. Once we have this, we always round up. 8 and 4 tenths rounds up to 9. This number gives us an idea for our class width. Now we can absolutely use 9, but we're actually going to round all the way up to 10 and use 10 for our class width. So let's use 10. This is because we are working with ages. 10 makes more sense. 10 is kind of a natural group for ages. It will be more convenient and work better for our table. That way we have the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, and the 60s. So just to recap here, as far as class width, we took the range, 42, and divided it by the number of classes, 5. That gave us 8 and 4 tenths. We always round that number up. So we rounded eight and four tenths up to nine. 
Now again, can we make a frequency table using nine for the class width? Absolutely. But we're using 10 because that makes a little more sense for the ages, the data we are working with. Now we can start our table. We will make three columns and then a row up top for our column headers, the labels. The column on the left will be the ages column. The middle column will be the tally column. And then the column on the right will be the frequency column. Now we need five more rows for our classes. So one, two, three, four, and five. Now we can fill in our classes. The first thing that we need to do though is determine our starting point. We can either start with our lowest number in value, which is 23, or something a little under that. We need to make sure all of the data is included. Let's start a little under 23. So let's start with 20. This will give us nice classes to work with and classes that make sense for our table. Remember, our class width is 10. So this first class is 20 to 29 years old. Now you may be thinking 20 to 29 is only a class width of nine but actually it is 10. The class width is how many numbers we have within a class, a group. Think about it, we do have 10 numbers here. I'll write them out up top. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So our class width is 10 there. So that's something to keep in mind and be careful with. After 20 to 29 years old, we have 30 to 39 years old. Then we have 40 to 49 years old. Then 50 to 59 years old, and then 60 to 69 years old. So those are our five classes. Now we can work through our data and tally everything up. We will work from left to right and put a tally in the correct group for each age. Let's start with 23. So 23 goes right here. Then we have 51. 42, 45, 52, 29, 35, 33, 36, 46, 59, 45, 28, 31, 62, 50, 43, 47, 26, 65, 24, 32, 38, 41, 35, 45, 56, 50, 44, 38. Lastly, let's count everything up and put the final frequency for each age group. Let's start with 20 to 29 years old. We have five, 
teachers. For 30 to 39 years old, we have eight teachers. For 40 to 49 years old, we have nine teachers. For 50 to 59 years old, we have six teachers. And then for 60 to 69 years old, we have two teachers. Let's put a title up top here. So ages of high school teachers. And we are done. So there you have it. There are the basics of creating a grouped frequency table or grouped frequency distribution table. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.